Okay, we're recording this video is Wednesday, 8th of October 2014. It's just coming up to 6 a.m. Chicago time. So, I want to talk about a couple of things actually in this video. Um, I want to talk about this seasonality trade. I also want to talk about the stock market crash warning indicator that went off uh, two weekends ago. And in general, I want to talk about kind of daily support levels being broken. So I actually think this is quite an important video. We're sitting on a knife edge at the moment, and I want to talk about us potentially kind of falling through that and having a bit of a nasty couple of days. We could have a little bit of a bounce at the moment because this is an important level uh, here that we've got, but we're setting up for something that I don't think is going to be pretty. Anyway, so let's start with seasonality. Seasonality, I started off uh, September back on the 14th of September, uh, just back here, talking about we were setting up for the September effect. And the September effect is where we go through this dip uh, here, and it's kind of driven by uh, warnings about earnings kind of coming out. And this is uh, previously, this is kind of number four of the season of the five seasonal trades that I like kind of pointing out that have some uh, not just seasonal pattern, they also have some corroboration with more fundamental reasons driving a seasonal trade. That's what the trade looks like looked like last year. This blue bar is the exact same day uh, one year ago, and that was the seasonal trade as it kind of worked out. And you can see what's that's what the pattern kind of looks like on the seasonal indicator. So that was a warning that we were going to have a little bit of a seasonal shock, and we have had a nice one. We dropped up n nicely here. Uh, at this point, this was on the 24th of September, and we'd been playing around this 1970 level. I had a little uh, post come out that says, now we're going to tussle. And that was all about saying the importance of the 1970 level, and we were going to play around there for a few days, and then resolve, and resolve to the downside. And we finally got that break a few days ago, this one, bang, through the lows, and we put in this low down here. Now, what's the overnight low on this number? 1918, so has been the low. And then yesterday's activity was a really nasty down day. And we're playing with this little bit of a double bottom. There's a lot of volume coming, a lot of professional bars. The question is, is this level going to hold? Are we going to slip through it? Are we going to break into 1800s? Got to tell you, I think we are, but I don't think we're heading for something major, major. I, I just don't think that. But I do think we're going to have a nasty uh, kind of few days. But let me show you why I think that's the case. So another chart I'm showing you kind of frequently is this kind of higher time frame chart looking at three time frames starting with a 45 minute chart, ramping it up to 135 minute and then the daily chart here. And on these what we're looking for is breaks into trend uh, in lower time frames rippling through into higher time frames. And the important thing that we're doing at the moment, yesterday's high was marked, or the, the turnaround, the weakness that we had yesterday, was sparked because we had uh, a push back up to 1970, which was this absolutely key number that I was talking about. We're going to tussle around 1970, bang, we came back up to test it again, support becomes resistance, we push off that, and we kind of come back down, pullback to end of trend. So we're making a pullback to end of trend sequence on the 135 minute chart couple of things that are nice with this. First of all, we've got an exhaustion pattern on the left shoulder here, which is good. We've got a bullish divergence here that's kind of come in. Isn't too close to the zero line, but we're kind of coming back down with quite a lot of selling. Probably going to put in a flush pattern, which is kind of, you know, severe selling, but maybe not quite as severe as the last point down here. But the point here is we've got a little bit of time to run on this pullback to end of trend in terms of the timing, cyclical timing for this kind of going on. And that could easily, with the time, just push us past that lows and it could get quite nasty. Um, so that's got to play out on this medium time frame. On the 45 minute chart, we're now breaking again below support. On the way down here, we have not had a proper pullback to end of trend break. We've had pushes past support and bounce back. And each time we bounce back to resistance, we just push off it, bang, keep on going down and down and down. But we've not had a proper trend break that gives us a pullback to end of trend sequence. So I'm looking for that on the 45 minute chart. And again, we've had another break of support kind of testing with these lows kind of down here. This could be the one that puts in pullback to end of trend. And where that goes off is most likely going to be below this low. And so once that one goes, I think that's going to be quite shocking to people. And then on the daily chart, we're through support here. We're through support. And so this potentially has to push out to a proper pullback to end of trend on the daily time frame. 
So when you put all of that together, we've not put in the bottoming activity. This one's the closest, the 135 minute to put in push, pull back to end of trend here. That's the closest to kind of finding some kind of completion here. But before that goes off, we've got to see it on the 45 uh, minute chart. So, and then, you know, we've got this one on the daily chart. So all of that is, you know, um, I mean, I, li I like downtrends. I've got no, and I've got you know a, a bearish bias. I've got bearish bones in my body, and and uh, you know, so I I like it when it kind of heads down. But you know, a lot of people kind of long term invested. It hurts people with you know stock portfolios and pension plans and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, um, I think this is going to travel further, and those are my reasons uh, for it. Then uh, when you look at the indices on um, a daily time frame, we're playing with these daily support levels on a couple of charts and we're through them on a couple of charts. So here's the Dow um, and we're just coming up to this support level here. You know, the last time we had an exhaustion pattern here, we bounced from it. We could easily just drop through this and then pull back and a trend on a daily time frame, which would be a big move. And again, you know, uh, psychologically dropping through uh, this previous low that we've just bounced off, I think will will scare people. So we're playing with a potential break on the Dow chart, on the S&P 500. We're we're through it already. You know, here was exhaustion and exhaustion at these points here and here. We've not seen exhaustion on daily time frame, and we're breaking into a trend move. We're below support here on uh, the S&P 500. On um, the Russell, again, we're through it here. We've not gone to a pullback to end of trend that we bounced from. We've got all these exhaustion patterns, though, coming in on, on the Russell, but it's through a support. I mean, I like to see all three things coming together where we get you know, pullback to end of trend, the professional bars, the exhaustion patterns. Remember, three non-correlated indicators coming together. So we're through support there. And then NASDAQ, again, we're through support here. We've not seen exhaustion sell. You know, we've had exhaustion buy and flush patterns topping this thing out. We've not seen something on the downside bottoming it and now we're through support on the daily time frame so not good um, in terms of where we might go uh, in the shorter term in the next day or two here's the 40,500 tip bar chart and here's the double bottom that we're just playing with at the moment at this kind of 1918 1920 level so that was the extreme that we got to the other day we've had a strong bounce back up to the tussle level at 1970 we come back down to test and people at the moment are just buying a double bottom right here and there's that exhaustion kind of sell here the things I don't like about this are that we've broken through another support area on the 40,500 tip bar chart this is pullback to dirty end of trend but we have bought, broken through there uh, we've got an exhaustion pattern, but we've not put in bullish divergence yet. I mean, uh, that could be a left shoulder, but we've still got to put in the, the bullish divergence before it turns around. So, I mean, we could have a little bit of strength today, um, just kind of testing and so on, but uh, just just watch out. Now, um, let's talk about this, the dreaded stock market crash warning indicator, because I did have a couple of emails. When this went off a couple of weekends ago, I didn't mention it. And got some emails, people saying, why didn't you mention this? Because it went off. And I actually appreciated some of the comments got saying that um, you know, the previous ones have not worked out nicely. And, and this is um, what's happening. Anyway, so this is free code. Uh, you can download this. It's uh, a stock market crash warning indicator that up until the last couple of sequences has had really good stats. But as you can see, the last three signals that we've had here, bang, 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 have not worked out. You know, we really haven't had any weakness um, after any of those signals. And this looks for at least a 10% uh, kind of correction um, as a, a first sign. And here's the last one that went off a couple of weekends ago. It's uh, I'll link to the uh, the post that talks about the setup for this, uh, but it's all to do the commitment of traders data and the way it flips around the zero line around kind of various points. So it's kind of gone off here. What I want to show you is just this. These patterns work out really nicely. Um, when the bounce back level is really weak. So look at 2007, there's the warning indicator right at the top that goes for then a correction level and a crash level after that. The uh, warning signal when it goes off, uh, the little uh, the commitment of traders reading, reading is at really weak. It's very close to the zero line here. The good ones, these one here that ended up with a correction as well, you know the signal is really close to the zero line. Uh, this one here, the signal was a little bit early. Let me just bump this up. It was a little bit early, and so you know we still had quite a lot of readings, strong readings above the zero line, and it wasn't until until they kind of got close to closer to the zero line, uh, you know, that we really got a correction there. This one uh, warning was close to the zero line, and then it went to a correction. So, as a little you know kind of caveat as to you know good readings and bad uh, warnings from here, each of these warnings came with fairly decent readings. 
in terms of what commitment is, of traders was doing at the time. We bounced back to fairly significant levels uh, here. Uh, and the bounce back that we've had that's generated this reading has come back up to a positive 19. So that's a fairly strong reading kind of going on there, which suggests to me that I'm not sure if this one's going to be a doozy and really kind of work out well. I'd like to see this really weaken towards the zero line uh, quite dramatically uh, over the next kind of couple of weeks for that to really work out. But it's out there uh, and you know it's kind of gone off. So uh, again, just bear that in mind in, in your kind of analysis. Um, and the uh, Forex uh, contracts that I've been looking to bounce for days and days, you know, I kept... I, it was way too early on the euro saying it was going to bounce around 31 and then you know I thought it was going to bounce around 28 and we kind of pushed down to 26 anyway finally uh, these currencies are starting to to turn uh, a little bit I'm again uh, the couple of videos I've done on the euro in the meantime I said this trend is not over um, but we could have a little bit of a reaction back uh, kind of a bit of a short covering rally um, bit of a kind of pushback. So euro has finally found a little bit of ground and you know if the equity market's really weakening in the US and a lot of capital is kind of scared out of the dollar, dollars being extremely strong, people taking profits, people moving, you know these other currencies could bounce uh, in the meantime. So that's what we're seeing at the moment because the equity market is weak, uh, the dollar is starting to strength uh, to weaken right now and so these currencies are just having a little bit of a playback. But it's you know still you know nasty kind of downtrend. So euro they're starting to kind of play back uh, a little bit. Aussie dollar uh, bounced a little bit after falling really quite strongly into 86s. Canadian dollar again found a little bit of strength there. Japanese yen we found some strength bouncing back. British pounds put in pull back to end of trend. This is all the um, shenanigans over the uh, you know, the scare that uh, Scotland Scotland would leave, and then you know that was the day they uh, voted to stay, and then um, you know got resolved. Blue professional bars kind of downside. So we put in pull back to end of trend on the pound. Again, could have a little bit uh, could be a flush pattern kind of there being generated could have a little bit of a bounce back and the dollar index after this blue professional bars at the highs bang bit of a blow off move kind of just reached a little bit of a maximum kind of right now but it's still an uptrend you know still above resistance got to, got to put in pull back to end of trend all of the, all of those things all I'm saying is we could just have a little bit of a bounce back uh, in these currencies and a, a fall in the dollar index and that would you know line up with a fall in the equities market as well in terms of um, relative to bonds, relative to the yen, this is equities markets versus long-term bonds. I've shown you this chart before. It just calculates an oscillator based, based on the relative movements, the relative momentum of these t two things going on. We get overbought at these levels. We get oversold here. We're coming down to oversold, and the first red uh, bar has kind of popped out, popped up uh, on here. But you know we can go for for little touches and and uh, kind of go the other way, or we can have quite a few days of that kind of you know bonds being overbought and equities being oversold. So we just put in the first one of those uh, for the time being. We've not got there yet on the yen. This is what oversold uh, oversold on equities and overbought on yen looks like, where we kind of come back down to here. The red bars kind of come in. That's overbought. That's oversold. We've had overbought here. We've not got oversold yet. It's getting there. Uh, but we're not there yet in terms of the yen. And then just to say better X trend, you know, it's just rolling down. We've got these exhaustion patterns flipped over in the 500, you know, bang, 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 on the way down. NASDAQ, bang, 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 flipped over on the way down. Uh, here's uh, Dow, flipped over on the way down, exhaustion kind of sells. And here's the Russell, kind of, you know, it flipped over on the way down. So all of those things, trending systems kind of going down. But what we're trying to do is figure out, you know, where's this thing going to end and likely to bounce. And all I'm saying is I think... Um, I think this level could go, uh, this 1920 level could go, and um, we've got to put in those pullback trend of trends starting on the 45 minute chart and, you know, um, gone to the 135 and let's see what happens on the daily chart. So there we go, just a couple of charts from me. Hope your trading is going well.